yeah Yeah, I'm out at Brooklyn Now I'm down in Tribeca Right next to the Narrow But I'll be hood forever First of all, Don, uh, I'm delighted to be here and, and let me say that, you know, I'm glad that Barack Obama sent a peace envoy here to uh, Chicago with the Attorney General and Arnie Duncan But, but let's be clear, the, the community is upset You know, they were downtown in the comfort of downtown And they had their meeting in City Hall And while they had a meeting in City Hall A, fa a fight broke out at Finger And shortly after they departed uh, Chicago A woman was shot three times And so what we don't want to happen and I, and I applaud them on giving 500 times I'll be spiked out I could trip a referee Tell by my attitude that I most definitely from a man born of affluence who then became a much sought after criminal. But 10 years in prison made him vow to turn his life around and help make a difference. The task force uh, that Lester Arati, then a detective sergeant, uh, was uh, in charge of, pulled me out of a Mercedes Benz, put a shotgun to my head, and had me down on the ground. This wasn't just a run of the mill closing uh, that we arrested. This was a pretty sophisticated operation and a pretty dangerous one, too. Home of the hip hop, yellow cap, gypsy cap, dollar cap. Someone raises their hand to say, My God, my mother is locked up. That's not funny. See, that's not funny. How many of you have someone in your family that got shot and killed? Statue of Liberty, long live the world trade, long live the king, yo. I'm from the Empire State. That's Games. It's been a game. I used to be in jail. A lot of our students, that's their first opportunity for success, is to join a gang and sell drugs. So that's why they come. Late teens, Victor led an armed robbery ring equipped with walkie-talkies and police scanners. He served several years in federal prison, but he simply returned to a life of crime. Victor got caught manufacturing and selling $40 million worth of fake Visa gold cards and was sent to federal prison a second time. Our kids and young people that get in trouble in life are our most brilliant children. Tribute it. You got to collect it when somebody doesn't pay you. You got to advertise it. See, it takes intelligence to do that. Our young people need to redirect that energy. I uh, first met Victor Woods in 1984, and I did have a shotgun to his head. It was after two weeks of uh, exhaustive investigation with a team of 60 detectives under my command that we followed Victor and his crew uh, day and night uh, for 14 straight days until we finally caught him and, and his associates in the act of committing an armed robbery. Victor turned to me and he said the three magic, magic words. He said, I take responsibility for what I did. Victor and I have been friends ever since. I mean, my God, you have eight felonies. Who's going to listen to you? It's not where you start. It's where you finish. It's not it's not what others think about you, it's what you think about yourself that will determine what you're going to do in life. Eyesight's what we see in front of us, vision is what we see down the road. I had a vision. His name is Victor Woods. He grew up in Chicago. He spent time in prison and then wrote a book about his life. Would you one of the first guys that I've ever heard really blame the media for uh, committing a, a pretty serious crime? So what happened? Uh, basically, uh, art often uh, imitates life, and some of the movies that I watched, uh, The Godfather, being a young man, 15, 16 years old, and being impressionable, uh, Scarface and different movies like that, kind of had a strong impression on me and kind of made me uh, think about being involved in, in a life. Of Tear up negative opinions that people have about you. Tear them up. I want you to remember Victor Woods. When they tell you you're not good enough to go to college, when you can't open your own business, when someone tells you that your life isn't worthy of being told, when someone puts you down because of the way you look, or somebody says you're not pretty enough or smart enough, remember me!
because you can make it. My grandma, you have to make a decision about getting in a car with somebody who's drinking or driving too fast too. Might be your boyfriend, you have to tell him to slow down. You have to say, if you don't slow down, I'm gonna have to get out of the car, does that make sense? No, I, nobody can hear you. No, nobody can hear you. On Speaking. social media. See, I said this before and I'm gonna say it again. Now, when you go and apply for a job, people go on your Facebook page and look what's on there. I had to tell somebody in my own family, you look like a complete fool on Facebook. Everything that you do does not need to be posted on Facebook and it leaves a digital imprint. So everything you do 10, 20 years from now will show up on Facebook. So when you go to college and you put on your best clothes and you go for that interview, somebody will just dig or go on Facebook and find out what you really like. Never mind how you presented yourself at the job interview, we want to see your Facebook page. See, being a loser is a conscientious decision to lose and being a winner is a conscientious decision to win. To win. It takes practice every day to win. Habits are things you do over and over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, you know, where do you get a chair like that? I mean, have y'all, I think it's the Versace symbols up here on the top of the chair. Sing, and what was that song, Rain or something? Where everybody we got to jamming and everything up in here. I got loose, I was about to grab some woman to get to. Let me ask you this, Victor, then, because we know it was there um, right after the uh, the beating at Finger High School with Gary and Albert. Yes. You've been inside the school. What is it like now? Do, do the children still talk about that, think about that? Has their demeanor changed? What's the mood like inside of Finger High School? Well, th th those young people aren't going to forget about that. I mean, you know, one of their classmates has been killed, and, and the media has been all over the place, and, of course, the police are very visible. So those young people are still talking about it. They've still been traumatized, and they need help. And quite frankly, what they are talking about, Don, is they need jobs. I asked those young people how many of them have a job, and about 99% of them do not have jobs. I've come here today because of the power of God that rose me up from a maximum security prison in Wisconsin to begin speaking in prison, to rise me up to be a beacon of light and hope for the unemployed, for the sick, for the shut-in, for the people who have been disrespected. The people have lost their jobs, the people that are hungry. And on the election saying, when, what, why hasn't he said anything? He finally said something last week through uh, the press secretary, Robert Gibbs. But there are people in this city saying, he knows the south side of Chicago. He it was a community organizer here. His wife is from the south side of Chicago. Why hasn't he said anything? Why isn't he here? We know that the members of his cabinet are coming next week. What, what do you want to say about that? Barack Obama is busy in Afghanistan. And he's busy with dealing with health care. Not so, where you start in life, it's where you finish. When I first heard about uh, Victor Woods, I thought he would be good for kids. He brings the real world to the kids. Speaking on an adult perspective and then bringing it down to the kids level, the kids can relate to him very well. Off to prison I go. Prison is a college for criminal activity. Nobody really benefits from going in prison. So I went in as an armed robber, learned about counterfeiting, credit card fraud, all that stuff. I don't want that to happen to you. Like, I've been going through hard times my whole life. And when he said, um, always keep pushing yourself, like, it, it, it really motivated me. Not what other people think about you, it's what you think about yourself. You, 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 and you can be anything you want to be, and don't you let anybody tell you you're not good. Making sure young people do not end up on the wrong side of the law is a challenge for many people. Keeping them from ending up in jail or worse is the job of one man who's traveling the country to try and make a difference. While these St. Petersburg children take a break from classes, they took part in what's called a seminar of hope. A chance for them to hear from someone who wants to make sure they stay out of trouble. Some of you young men will go on to do great things. Many of you will be in prison based on the decisions that you make. Woods, who's written a book about his past, 
travels the country to share his experiences, something that's welcome for members of the law enforcement community. To talk about where they've been and to guide and steer students not to go this route, but to take the, the other route. So it's very good to have him here. Woods told the students to stay away from drugs and violence. Most seemed attentive and willing to listen to his message. I think he connected with a lot of people. I was sitting around and everybody was paying attention, nodding their head, like taking in what he had to say and stuff. I was really into it. He was giving it, you know, all he's got. I was really paying attention. He was saying a lot of strong stuff that really got to me. And um, I was a pretty good influence. After his speech, many of the students took time to question Woods, who says it's important to take time out now with young people so they don't end up like he did. It's prescription drugs. It's heroin. It's cocaine. It's alcohol. All of those things rather than me say a lot about drugs. Let me give you one good reason you shouldn't use drugs. Show me some pictures of some of the people that have died. I want you to take a look at these people. You know Heath Ledger, who played the Joker? And was grossly talented, good looking, went through high school, competed, became one of the best actors in the world, starred as the Joker and Batman, he is gone because he used drugs. He's gone. Talented. Gone because of drug use. Please pay attention because you don't ever want to go down that road. Sometimes the first time you try something can be your last. He's gone. Paul Walker did not die from drug use. He died from making a decision about getting in a car after he and the other person had been drinking speeding in the car, and he's dead. He's dead now. They want you to try drugs, marijuana, heroin, crystal meth. Just try it once. It's OK. You'll like it. you remember this stuff and say no, because they'll kill you. Say, do not push this girl anymore. Do not push this girl anymore. has a right, excuse me, I want everybody to repeat after me. What's your first name again? Allison, Allison has a right to go to school and feel good about herself and nobody should take advantage of her and if we see anybody do anything to Allison that's not nice. We're going to tell the principal and we're going to tell the teachers so we can make sure it never, ever happens again. All right, y'all come over here. Some of them that come to school and bring guns to school or want to burn the school down, all of those kids did not have a connection with the school. That's why it's very important for everybody to be connected. If you see somebody that's being put down or having a bad day, you can walk up to somebody. I did this in prison. You can walk up to somebody and say, hey, I see you're having a bad day. How you feeling? Can I help you? What's going on? You make a connection with people where everyone feels connected. In case of emergency, use the exit sign. What would do with the exit sign at 20,000 feet? That don't even make no sense. Let it be on your lips. Let it be on your heart. Let it be in your actions. And praise God by God. Never. We got to keep on keeping on. Ever. Keep on pressing on. Ever. Keep on moving on. Never. Keep on.